Hello! Welcome to using the Eclipse Workbench. Eclipse is used for many different purposes. Developing software, developing web and mobile applications, developing rich client applications, and many others. In just about all of these cases, we use the Eclipse Workbench to edit files, manage views of our files and projects, and arrange our work area. In this tutorial, we will learn how to use many of the powerful features of the Eclipse Workbench. We will learn how to change the Workbench layout, how to use and customize perspectives and views, and some useful keyboard shortcuts. If you are new to Eclipse, or if you would like to learn more about using the features of the Eclipse Workbench, then this tutorial is for you. Although our sample project will include some Java files, this tutorial is not about programming. It's about using the underlying functionality of Eclipse and therefore should be applicable to many of the different ways that people use Eclipse. If you haven't already, please download the Tutorial Companion document and the Workbench Tutorial.zip file from the website. Also, you should already have Eclipse 3.3 or later installed. The Eclipse IDE for Java Developers download was used to make this tutorial. However, other Eclipse downloads will also work. The companion document has more detailed information about this. It also lists some useful resources to help you install Eclipse if needed. Finally, you'll get the most from this tutorial if you work along with the lessons as we go. Now, let's get started. Here we have launched Eclipse. It asks for our workspace and our workspace is just called Workspace. I'm running Windows XP and have installed Eclipse in a directory called C colon backslash Eclipse. You can install Eclipse wherever you like. If you are running on Linux or a Mac, your directories will be different. We'll press OK and Eclipse launches. The first thing we see in Eclipse is the welcome screen. This has some cool stuff on it that you might want to explore on your own. To get back to the welcome screen, just select Help, Welcome. So we'll close the welcome screen and get started. The first thing we'll do is import our project from the Workbench Tutorial.zip file that we downloaded from the website. To do that, we'll select File, Import, General, Existing Projects into Workspace, we'll press Next, We'll select Archive File, press Browse. We'll browse to the directory where we downloaded the file. Select the file, press Open. We'll just take the default proposal, which is to import all the projects inside the file. In this case, we just have one project, Workbench Tutorial. Press Finish. and now we've imported our project into Eclipse. We are not going to do any programming in this tutorial. This project simply gives us some files to work with. We can think of the Eclipse Workbench as having two main regions, the center area where we edit files and these regions along the outside where the various views are displayed. We'll start by exploring the center area which is called the edit area. This is where we edit our files. In most Eclipse work, viewing and editing files is an important activity. The types of files and editors you use will depend on the type of project you are working on. In our case, we have a Java project with Java source, XML, and text files. Now let's open some files for editing. First we'll expand our project. Now there are a number of ways to open files for editing. We can double click on a file, we can right click and select Open. Another way is to select the file and drag it onto the edit area. This also works with multiple files. Let's try it. We'll highlight some files holding down the CTRL key, so we select multiples. We'll highlight our Java files, a JPEG scrapbook file, an XML file, a text file, then we'll drag these files over to the edit area 
and Eclipse opens all of these files for editing. Now we can only see tabs for three of them. The other four are available if we click on the icon or we can also use Control E to see the same list, the list of all the open files. Also notice that they have slightly different decorations for the different types. These are Java files, this is my scrapbook file, here's an XML file with the X, and the text file. Now the edit area can be divided in half either vertically or horizontally. Let's try it. We'll click on the Test My Library XML file. We'll click on the Source tab down here so we have more text to look at. We'll click on the tab and drag it down to the bottom of the screen until we get the down arrow and the gray rectangle. Then we release the mouse and now our edit area is divided into two regions, upper and lower. We can do the same thing by dragging to the right or left. Let's drag the XML file to the right side. So again, we click on the tab, hold it, we'll drag it over till we get the rectangle, and now we've divided the edit area into a left and a right area. To give us even more flexibility, each individual edit window can also be divided the same way. For example, Let's drag the text file to the bottom of the XML edit view. And now that has been split into two separate areas with the XML file in the upper half and the text file in the lower half. In addition to splitting panels, we can also move files from one panel to another. If we drag the JPEG file over the top of the XML file, we can move this file from the left panel to the upper right panel. Now we have two files in this upper right panel. The testmylibrary.xml and the my scrapbook file that we just dragged on top. Now if we widen this a little bit, we can see that the file we dragged over became the second tab in this tab notebook. If we want it to be the first tab, we can just drag the tab over to the first position, like this. And now it's the first tab. Notice that we have one minimize and maximize button for the entire edit area. If we press the minimize button, the entire edit area is minimized and the Restore button is over here on the upper right. Similarly, if we press the Maximize button, the entire edit area is maximized with the same structure, in this case, the three separate panels. We can maximize the edit area either by pressing the Maximize button or by double clicking on any of the file tabs. When we double click on a file tab, it toggles between restoring the normal position and maximizing. When we maximize the editor area, the other views are minimized to these toolbars on the sides and bottom. These are called trim stacks and we'll discuss them when we talk about views. Now sometimes it's convenient to see different portions of the same file at the same time. This is easy to do in Eclipse. If we right click on the Person tab, one of the options is New Editor. When we select that, we get a second instance of the Person file. Now we can drag it somewhere say to the bottom of the same panel, and now we have two separate edit views of the person file. So we can be looking at one part up here and a second part down below. There are some other handy options on the right click menu. First, note that we get a different menu if we right click on the contents of a file as opposed to the files tab. For example, if we right click on the contents 
of the person file, we get menu choices related to this Java source file. When we right click on the tab, we get options that are the same for any file type. Two of these options can save us some time. If we go to the upper left area, we have four files open for editing. If we right click on the person tab, we have options for close all and close others. If we select close others, the other three files in this tab notebook are now closed and we only have the person file open. Now let's go to the JPage file in the upper right and let's select close all. Notice that this closed only the two files in this panel and then removed the panel. So now the text file takes up the entire right hand panel. Next, let's try dragging an edit view to an external window. Take the person tab, we'll drag it up, and notice that we get this circle with the slash, the international no symbol, that indicates that we can't do this. However, we can create an edit area in an external window by selecting Window, New Window, and it creates an entire workbench in a separate window. First, let's move this so it's easier to see. We now have two Eclipse workbenches open both pointing to the same workspace and projects. So for example, if we open the test my library XML file in the second workbench, we have in effect an external edit panel. At this point, we've spent some time and effort arranging our workbenches. What happens if we exit Eclipse? Well, let's try it. Normally, we can just press the X in the upper right hand corner to exit Eclipse. However, since we've got two workbenches open, pressing the X will just close one of them. So if we want to preserve our workbenches for our next session, we need to select File, Exit. Now we'll restart Eclipse and we can see it has the same files opened and the same layout as when we closed it. Before we finish, let's clean up a bit. We'll close our second workbench by clicking the X. Then we'll consolidate our open edit files by dragging all of them to one panel. Finally, we'll right click, say close all, and we've closed all of our files for editing. We're off to a great start with the workbench. We've learned how to use the edit area and configure it in a variety of ways. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to arrange views on the workbench and then look at some common view options. This is the end of lesson one. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.